Rudyard Kipling once wrote, smells are surer than sights and sounds to make your heartstrings crack. Okay, so what is it with smell and fragrances? What are the do's and don'ts? Stick around as we try and make sense of this stuff. See what I did there? Perfume has been around since the time of ancient Egyptians, and the first named perfume, Bouquet à la Marichal, arrived on the commercial market in 1675. Perfume is a personal way to communicate one's sensuality and attractiveness. Perfume is worn for a variety of different reasons. To attract and seduce the opposite sex. To improve one's mood or state of mind. To boost one's level of self-confidence to refresh, to energize. Now, masculine fragrances present a bit of a mix-up. Eau de Cologne refers to either the traditional Eau de Cologne recipe, which is the trademark scent first made in Cologne in Germany, or the lighter concentration of a given perfume. Many men refer to their fragrance as Cologne. Now, this is mostly an American and Anglo-Saxon phenomenon due to the reluctance of ascribing themselves as perfume wearing, which is considered effeminate, if you know what I mean. Now, shh, come closer. A little bit closer. A little bit closer. It's perfume. Deal with it, okay? So what are the types of perfume? Well, let's start with aftershave. These typically contain a faint one to 3% of aromatic compounds, which are meant to create a feeling of euphoria on freshly shaven skin. They kind of uh, sting for a little while and then quickly disappear altogether. Look, I love aftershave splashes. I just wish that they would last a lot longer. Eau de Cologne. Now these are anywhere from between two to 5% in aromatic compounds. Now typically these were citrus type perfumes, similar to the Italian Colonia type uh, of scents and they contain, as I say, about 5%. Original Eau de Cologne is a registered trademark. Now go nuts with this stuff, as it's very light and does not last. I generally splash cologne on after a shower, I'm not shaving, around the neck, arms, and all over. They may be used as an aftershave splash as well. Eau de Toilette, anywhere from between five to 20% of aromatic compounds. Now this is very common, in fact, most common in men's fragrances and slightly higher in aromatic compounds compared to say cologne. Now when I spray on EDTs, it's in the neck area, the wrists or forearms and it will typically last up to four hours. Now if required, reapply, that's it. Then there are eau de parfum, 10 to 30% aromatic compounds. Sadly, there aren't many men's fragrances available in the eau de parfum and these last anywhere from between six to eight hours. You don't need much of this, and I just usually go two squirts on either side of the neck, and that's it. it. Tends to be a little more expensive than EDT, and colognes, obviously. A personal favorite for me at the moment is Frappin's Luministe. Then we have Parfum, which is 20 to 50% aromatic compounds. Now these are the bomb in the fragrance world, and sadly few, if any, parfums exist on the market for men. La Rêve Parfum, which is a fragrance house in France, is one such example. Now, as the percentage of aromatic compounds increases, so does the intensity and longevity of the scent created. Now, fragrance smells different on different people. This can be due to body chemistry, condition of the skin, the individual's diet, medication, lifestyle, stress, and the environment in which we live. You may not be aware of your fragrance after a while, but that's because your sense of smell becomes quickly fatigued. After a period of smelling anything, including your own fragrance, you become used to it and may not be able to smell it. Typically, it takes our nose about five minutes to get used to a scent, after which time the brain no longer registers it. The scent is still there and is easily detectable to other people, just not to ourselves. Now, the length of time that fragrances remain on the skin varies from person to person. A typical fragrance will last at least four hours, so it's perfectly acceptable to reapply once during the day and then again later in the evening. Application. Now, 
you should apply this anywhere from between 20 to 30 centimeters away or about nine inches. All fragrance bottles have a spray nozzle and this is purely for distribution. If you come closer, you create a concentrated area on your skin. And quite frankly, you're wasting your money. Now, how to make a scent last longer? Firstly, apply it to moisturized skin. Secondly, apply your fragrance low on the body so that the scent rises and it won't be lost quickly. And thirdly, apply perfume immediately after your shower as open pores are warm and the skin will soak up the scent. Now, how do you store perfume? Well, perfume does deteriorate and the time period often depends on the temperature, light and length of storage. Extreme heat and direct sunlight can break down the components of most fragrances, so keep all fragrances in a cool, dry area and away from windows. Perfume should be stored at room temperature and out of direct sunlight and away from extreme heat sources. On average, the shelf life of a fragrance is three to five years. For perfumes, it is much less. Oh, and remember, don't rub scents frantically as it overheats the aromatic compounds and changes the scent profile. And never, ever, ever mix scents. Well, that's it, folks. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them below. Thanks for watching.